Hey there, Andrew Drew from VSN Tallahassee. Thanks for joining us for a little high school spotlight here on the Varsity Sports Network. Today's show is brought to you by the GEICO local office here in Tallahassee, just off of North Monroe Street. Jim Smith and the gang can handle all your insurance needs. You can check them out by visiting geico.com slash Tallahassee or give them a ring at 850-778-4000. We have a big show lined up for you today. Our special guest is Coach Ricky Hufty of Suwannee Flag Football. We're going to be talking about the annual Capital City Classic Tournament, flag football here in the Big Bend, and more. So stick around. Hope you enjoy the show. Coach Hufty of the Gobby Coaching Staff. Colburn wants to take a big shot going down far side. Got oh, Monty Williams! Catch. Big time catch just outside the goal line. Climbing the ladder does Williams. If not for the fall, she would have gotten into the end zone. How are things going for you out to our east, Coach? Good. Thank you all for having me and, you know, letting us be a part of this and kind of give you some information on what's going on from our end. It's def- I mean, things are good. It's definitely weird. You know, it's an odd situation just with the virus and something that nobody's really seen or experienced before, and it's a lot of just adjusting on the fly. You are, of course, the chief organizer of the Capital City Classic, which we know the monster flag football tournament. Unfortunately, Coach, as you told us, we had to cancel it, and so it will no longer be taking place this year. would have been, the, I believe, the 10th annual edition of it. What went into that process and your reactions for the cancellation? Yeah, you know, it's definitely unfortunate, not just for the tournament, but for sports throughout the state and across the country for that matter just uh, in all sports not only ours specifically with the tournament obviously it was unfortunate you know this would have been year 10 which is a big milestone year and something that all of us were really excited about we were up to 61 total teams uh in the tournament which is insane it would have been the largest uh it is the largest flag football tournament in the nation which is something that's really cool and that we're proud of um so obviously there's a lot of teams that you know were disappointed with not being able to come to the tournament let alone play in general um though kind of the way that things transpired um I'll be honest with you I maybe just being naive I didn't realize I mean obviously I was aware of everything with the virus but it didn't really dawn on me that there was a potential for it to get where it is right now and for it to happen so quickly but then it clicked you know that FSU was closing down some things and obviously that's where we host the tournament at we were going to need 11 fields running non-stop Friday and Saturday and there's no other location around they can handle that kind of uh, facility space. Um, and so FSU has always been tremendous to us, but we reached out to FSU and without them really being able to tell us, they let us know that things were potentially in jeopardy. Um, and then obviously as the situation developed overall, we became more re- realistic with the fact that this all could go away really, really quickly. Um, and so then we had some counties across the state that started to restrict travel even before the state itself did and before FSU closed down the facility. Okaloosa County, Broward County said that they were not going to allow their teams to travel. So we started losing a few teams there that weren't going to be able to come. And then at that point, FSU shut down uh, their facility and would now allow any outside events to take place which at that point we looked at some other options. If the state were still going to let sports go on, could we do it anywhere else? And there just wasn't, there wasn't a way that we could do the tournament in a different location. We couldn't change the time because the schedule or the season happened so quickly. But then on top of that, you get all these teams that get approval to travel at a certain time and make hotel reservations um, and base their schedule around the idea of being able to come to the tournament at a certain time. So it's not like we could even do it a different time. And so it became apparent to us that we were going to have to cancel it, which is unfortunate, obviously, and sad for everybody involved. But obviously, we're dealing with something that's a lot bigger than just our tournament or even the sport for that instance. You know, obviously, the health and safety of everybody is priority number one, especially as we deal with something that we just don't know a lot about. I think that's probably what's scaring people more than anything is that there's just so many unknowns. It's so it's brand new, obviously. Um, You know, so while it stinks that it won't go on and that even the potential for the season is in jeopardy. Um, We're excited to kick it back up next year, and the tournament's not going anywhere, so we'll just celebrate year 10 next year. What kind of spread were we anticipating coming out this year? Yeah, it was, man, it was incredible to watch it develop. And we've grown every year, obviously, and it's just been neat to see. But then the explosion that happened this year, which we anticipated with the redistricting, smaller districts, extended the season to 15 games, all of that allowed for some teams that had been wanting to come that maybe were restricted 
prior to be able to. And so I want to say we had 47 or 48 programs and then 61 total teams because some were bringing a JV and a varsity. But you're talking about 61 teams in the whole tournament spread, about 11 fields running nonstop Friday and Saturday. Um, just a very unique setup and something that's really cool to see the growth. And like I said, I think, you know, we're very blessed for what the tournament's become, and it's definitely a reflection of all the people that are involved. Um, but it's also, I think, a reflection or kind of a mirror image of what's happening with the sport as a whole, like you said, and just the explosion, the growth. Obviously, I'm here at Swanee and Live Oak now, which is right there at I-10 and 75, for anybody that doesn't know, but this is our first year, and then Baker County opened up this year, and you're just seeing all these areas really open up. I mean, the sport just continue to grow, and the publicity that's getting, we've got two teams that are now fully sponsored by Nike, Robinson and Alonzo, which are, there's no more deserving teams than those two with the amount of sustained success that those programs and coaches have had down there, but to see Nike get involved, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have gone head-on into everything, and they've been beyond tremendous and their support of flag football even offering some scholarship money for flag football players to go to college um it's just really neat to see the growth and it's only going to continue to get bigger what were the teams you were really excited to see or just looking forward to their season this year we had a lot of new teams that were finally able to come that had been wanting to riverview who had just an unbelievable year last year and coach david coffee has was has been on staff the whole time but he's the one that's taken over that program as the head coach now um, and he was all in from the beginning, so they were going to be coming up. And then Travis Combs was also at Riverview the last couple of years. He's the head coach at Leonard now in Tampa. They were going to be coming. We had some teams from down south that had been wanting to come up. Uh, Dino Johnson at uh, Hialeah. Mainland and Seabreeze from Daytona area were going to be the first teams from over there that were coming. Uh, from Jacksonville, we had Mandarin, and they always do a phenomenal job. It's just a, a cool collection of teams it's different from anywhere else statewide that you'll get again aside from the state tournament when you kind of have representation from all areas and a great collection of talent um it's hard to find a better collection than what you're going to see at the ccc so very true very true not a pressing matter at this point but obviously an abbreviated season and counties and other schools are on different pages but if they said go ahead and go for it what would be your recommendations, if any, to have some sort of playoffs or some kind of state champion crowned? Because um, it's a really hairy scenario, and this is only under the best of circumstances. For us, if the season even were to resume on April 15th or whatever that date is, you know, in the middle of April, uh, it essentially, our season would essentially be over. Uh, we can't compete in the playoffs anyway, assuming that they're not extending the season like beyond and into the summer, which it personally I'm not in favor of. I just think it gets really, really hairy when you start extending things into the summertime. Um, but regardless, if things were to come back in the middle of April, which I think if school gets extended any beyond that, I, I just I don't really see them doing anything with spring sports. If we were to come back in the middle of April, um, I would personally, just from what I've thought of, assume that maybe you could still try to get stuff in, but you would just start the playoffs then and there. I think you change the way the districts are done and you just allow everybody into the district tournament at that point and then kind of let it unfold and then the playoffs can ensue from there. So instead of the top four, like for flag football, just allow the whole district in, have a bracket, you know, style, however many teams it is, advance to a district tournament and then you'll have one district champ and then the playoffs would still, quote unquote, fall out in the normal playoff schedule because that would resume essentially when all spring sports are going through their playoffs. So I guess there's a small potential it could happen, but there's no way that you could go off district record because there were teams like Okaloosa County that had district games canceled because of all this. I think at that point you just allow everybody in and, and try to have some kind of playoff happen and just kind of see how it goes. Like you said, being unable to participate in the playoffs this year, but do you have any seniors on your team? Uh, if so, what's what's the message to them? Because this has got to be tough. Yeah, I know it is. I mean, you feel for the seniors probably more than anybody just because if things were to get wiped out, I mean, this is it for them, and they didn't really get to go out on their terms or at least kind of fulfill a full season and get to experience senior night and just all the things that go along with that. And um, our seniors have been such a blessing and such a big part of what we've done, especially as we lay the foundation for the culture that we want to build in our program. We couldn't have asked for a better group of seniors. I'm not one that's married to having 
uh, seniors be captains. I've had a freshman as a captain when I was at Leon High School, and probably the first freshman captain in the history of that program. Um, so I've never been married to seniors being captains, but it was almost unanimous through our team and also with our coaches and who our captains were going to be this year. And they're all seniors, all four of them. Um, so we've just been very lucky to have a really good senior group that's kind of laid the foundation for what our program is going to be um, and done it the way that we wanted and really bought in. Anytime you have new coaches come in, obviously a little bit different here because this is a whole new program, period. But anytime you have new coaches come in, seniors either buy all in or they're kind of half out. And, you know, they're the ones that at times you have to maneuver more than anybody to really get to buy in and get things the way you want. For us, our seniors have been all in from the very beginning, and they've helped mold the way that things have gone for us and lay the foundation of the way our program is going to be for years to come. Do you have a couple of favorite moments or a favorite moment that we got this one thing and I'm going to be able to just put a bookmark in that or log that in the memory bank and that's how I'm going to remember the 2020 season? Yeah, you know, I think just kind of as a whole, it was really neat to go through the process, getting kids interested in it. Live Oak's a very football-driven community. Um, a lot of rich history and tradition. It's a very unique setup and one of the few. We kind of joke it's some of the last of the Mohegans type stuff. You know, small town, one horse town. Everybody loves the high school and athletics and less of the outside distractions and AU this and, you know, all those different things. Um, and so going through and getting the kids excited, it was something that a lot of them had been wanting but hadn't had the opportunity to do until we got the program this year creating a team, going through practice, but then just some of the stuff that we do, you know, and I believe in the way that we do things and the way that our program is set up and the culture that we look to create and the values that we base our program on. Um, and so some of the different things that we've done um, as team, you know, we traveled to Tampa, being part of the Bucks, seeing our kids get to experience that first win in the history of the program down there in Tampa. Granted, it was preseason, but winning one of our games down there, and then just watching the kids grow, even from that first game where they were wide-eyed and trying to figure out how the sport worked. And no matter what you do in practice, it's hard to simulate actual game speed and how things transition from offense to defense and how you substitute and the speed of it all. So just seeing them do that, um, getting you know all of our stuff in, our new jerseys, and just having the kids be excited about that. And then our first game um, ever was a home game. So getting to play in Live Oak in historic Paul Langford Stadium with all the history and tradition and state championship signs that are up there. And we beat Baker County in double overtime, which was just a neat thing. Anytime you go to overtime, it's always interesting. And then for us to be fortunate enough to come out on top against another new program and Coach Staples over there, who's really doing a great job. And they've gotten their first win in the history of their program since that time as well. Um, and then also some of the other things that we do within our program and um, kind of a a youth group type setup that we do. And then, um, you know, just trying to help build our kids as people um, on top of that as athletes and just kind of get them set up to be successful. Hopefully our goal is when they leave our program that they look back and it's some of the best times that they've had in high school. And then also that they can look back and one day say that they're a better person from the time they spent with us. So, so coach, obviously, like you talked about, um, with the time off, just, just an interesting, just a unique scenario. And um, it's kind of an interesting format because the counties are being let to kind of decide for their own fate. But then it seems like sometimes the state is coming in and say, hey, this is a minimum of what we want to see. And then we'll leave it up to you guys. Um, what's kind of been the feeling or the feedback? Obviously, Leon County has put a stop to all athletic events uh, until further notice. So it doesn't look like spring sports are going to happen for the rest of the year here in Tallahassee um, but what's kind of the word out there for you uh, any local uh, governing bodies been reaching out to the school or what's kind of the feeling if you had to take a guess or um, any information like we said that's been relayed to you on the status of everything no just for right now that we're going off what's going on with the school so as long as there's no school there's new sports if school gets allowed back uh, and the FHSA says that sports will continue. I assume that our school would allow us to. Our school kind of falls, you know, in line of follows the FHSA in the state and kind of what they do. I know some of the other states have kind of taken it in their own hands or some of the other counties, excuse me. Um, but then I just think kind of across the entire state, everybody is very unsure of how to handle everything just because it is so new. But I think also everybody's going to err on the side of 
caution always, which is completely understandable. You're dealing with kids and you're dealing with uh, youth and, and that you're responsible for. So the cautionary side is always going to be the side that's aired on. It kind of, too, it's a lot like uh, college football recruiting. You know, as soon as one school falls in, everybody else is like, oh, I like that kid, too. We're going to offer him. And that's kind of where we're at here now, too. I know when we were in our faculty meeting earlier in the week, they strongly reiterated to us the um, responsibility on our part not to get our kids together at all during this time out of school. Obviously, there's no organized activity going on through the sports, but then obviously being smart about not trying to get your kids together for anything outside of even sports, even for like a team dinner or something, just because if we were to potentially have the virus and then it gets transferred to one of our kids because of a meeting that was set up, um, obviously that's a, a bad situation. So just being really smart, making sure that we are keeping our kids and ourselves safe and everybody kind of at distance at this point. We keep referencing the growing nature of the flag football program. If there is a school or if there is a couple personnel there in a certain area of the state, or maybe they're looking to jumpstart a program like you did this year. What do you tell them? Yep, no, it is extremely unique. Um, we're very fortunate to be able to be part of such a such a cool and fun sport. It's all football at its roots. I'm the biggest advocate of that. But there's different intricacies of it. But for anybody starting new, um, it's cliche, but just don't feel like you're in it alone. I mean, flag football community is very unique in the sense that as much as we're all trying to beat each other, we're all very open to helping each other out and grow the sport and help people as they kind of get into it head first and get their feet wet. So don't be afraid to reach out to anybody. Um, I'm always open. Not that I have all the answers in the world because I definitely don't, but there's a lot of great coaches across the state that'd be willing to help get you set up and kind of give you the rundown of what things should look like and allow you to kind of put your own spin on it, but at least give you the foundation and the template to kind of work off of. What's the best way to get a hold of you or to get involved in the tournament? Because 2021 will be the official 10th year, and we'll be excited for that. But how do they get in touch and if they want to become a part of the tournament in 2021? Yeah, for sure. We're not going to throw you to the Wolves and have you play Robinson and Alonzo, who have seven state championships in seven years, it seems like. Um, but uh, you'll be in a bracket that's comparable talent-wise, and uh, you only grow from playing games and good games, so the experience does, I think, more than anything. Uh, my email is coachhufty, H-U-F-T-Y, 11 at gmail.com, or I'm, we're on Twitter and Instagram um, at ccc underscore flag fb, so message us on there. We also have a website cccflagfootball.com we're always accessible if you have questions we're very big proponents of getting out of your area playing teams that are different and then just the experience that comes with being part of the tournament very cool very cool yeah thanks coach and that's all we have time for here on today's show special thanks to head coach ricky hufty for coming aboard and giving us the lowdown if you're looking for some more sports news information highlights broadcasted games and more Make sure to visit us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We've got you covered. Also available on our website, varsitysportsnetwork.org. For this time, I'm Andrew Jupe from VSN Tallahassee. Take care. Today's show is brought to you in part by the local GEICO office in Tallahassee, State Farm, Southern Equipment Rental, Core of Physical Therapy, the U.S. Army, and the A-Team.